Here we are at the studio of sculptor William Lofgren, walking by some of his latest creations. William, you want to come introduce us to these characters here? Uh, sure, why not? Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Jumping Jack, and he's a sheep. Um, nice. This is, this is Jane. Jane is um, from the Petroglyph Provincial Park in Ontario, and she's kind of the one responsible for all of this mayhem. Is uh, the image that I found of her um, kind of inspired me to move into the whole petroglyph um, area and use that for subject matter, and I think it's something that works really nicely with the cast iron. And this one is actually an original design that my sister Kathy did for me, named Jane after my mom. It seemed oddly appropriate to name the piece after my mom. This is um, Oscar. Hello, Oscar. Oscar is my biggest piece today. He's about 95 pounds, which is about as big as I can create at this point in time. Being a one-man show, that's enough of a workout for me. Okay. And then finally, this is um, Jack, which is Jumping Jack's uh, less athletic brother. And uh, that one kind of looks like uh, <laughs> a, a chicken pleading or, or something begging for rain or something like that. This is in pieces. This is how I get the pieces back from the foundry. Um, I've pre-drilled a few of these, but they're all cast in segments. And, I and you said it was cast iron? It's cast iron. Okay. Um, I picked up a little bit of surface rust from being um, outside for a few days. But it's almost ready to go together. Um, I think the last couple of pieces I have to do is drill some holes, then we'll assemble it, and then do the final grinding, and then it's ready for rust. And my method is, is kind of learning by, by trial and error, mm -hmm. but it's also learning by going with the flow of nature instead of against it. Okay. Um, that's kind of where my finishes come from, is that cast iron wants to rust anyway and so instead of fighting the rust I let the rust really do most of the work in the finishing for me is I get the pieces to rust and take advantage of, of the rust take advantage of what nature is going to do anyway and use it to my advantage rather than going against the flow because ultimately nature is going to win so what got you into this whole crazy world of art well, like a lot of people, last summer I found myself without a job, and uh, I had time on my hands. I had a little bit of money to play with. I didn't need to get a job right away, and I had the last summer was a fabulous summer weather-wise in the Northwest, so there was really very little reason to go back to work. And but I needed something to do. I've always wanted to do something creative. My friends have always told me to do something creative and, and uh, really pursue that. I've just never had the time. And I finally found myself with the key ingredient last summer, and that's time. And the other key ingredient, plenty of red wine in the cellar. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> and so taking advantage of a, of a bit of red wine, a bit of creativity, some time to be able to uh, to play and, and have a lot of trial and error. Um, I figured out that I wanted to do something in cast iron. Let me show you. I created my first casting off of this. This is a. This is how everything starts, actually. Ooh. So this is a pattern um, that's created out of plastic. Okay. And so it's done in two parts, the front and the back, and the two pieces align with each other. And I work with a, a foundry in South Seattle to take basically these two pieces and put them into um, sand cast okay. and then f pull these back out and then fill that void then with cast iron. This is how it was originally carved in rock. And so in rock you can see that it has a solid body. Oh, okay. But with, again with cast iron to do a solid body gets it's Pretty too, heavy. It's too heavy. Yeah, I know my frying pan's heavy now. And so I wanted to avoid the weight, but I also wanted to, to avoid the consumption of something that I didn't need. And mm -hmm. so I stripped out the weight and then um, created something with that negative space because somebody else can take advantage of that metal. I don't need it. And both metal work and the plastic mold making ends up spending a lot of time with the grinder to get things finish properly. So we're at the stage then where this piece is ready to start
start the finishing process, if you'd call it that. Um, again, I, I want to go with the flow of nature and I want it to rust. And to that end, I encourage it to rust with the application of, and this is where I give away all the trade secrets right here. Dun, 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 dun. Pickle juice. <laughs> okay. Is Very nice. Pickle juice is typically vinegar and salt. And guess what's in here? Anyway, I used to use vinegar and salt and a little bit of water, but then I figured out it's just like pickle juice. It's just like what pickle juice is anyway. Mm -hmm. And apparently I eat a lot of pickles. <laughs> and so I figured I may as well take advantage of... Here you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I figure I may as well take advantage of, uh, of the extra pickle juice I have around and use it for a uh, an acid to rust the metal. Again, trying to be responsible. And also this way I don't have to spend a dollar and a half on a, man, on a uh, thing of vinegar. There you go. Typically we just give it a good wipe down with pickle juice. This also smells a lot better than vinegar. And the pickle juice, the, the uh, vinegar and salt in it, act as a mild acid and starts the piece to rust faster. So, this guy then gets to age for a few days with a liberal dose of pickle juice. After about three or four days, then he, kind of a nice gray finish, mm -hmm. will end up looking like this, which is his slightly older brother. Oh, so how long has this one been out? So this has been out here since, oh, for three days now. Okay, so the finish, after we've got our better brush going, which is the primary ingredient, the other piece that we use is a little bit of linseed oil. Linseed is basically flaxseed, so it's an it is an organic product, and it goes on nice and clear, but, but it darkens up. My brush is a little on the stiff side. It darkens up and gives some interest to the rust. Okay, so is this okay. the trusty old barbecue here? Yep, so All once right. the linseed is dried out for usually about a week and has become, you know, it's not so tacky anymore. It's had a chance to really absorb into the pores of the metal. Then we bring it out and we give the whole thing a little barbecue. And so I've got this handy dandy Costco special, which is miraculously big enough to get a whole piece on at one time. So. And you do don't have any complaints from the characters here about getting too hot? No. <laughs> complaints from the neighbors periodically. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to crank this up to about 600 degrees for about 15 minutes. And I have this specially designed lid, mm. which I brewed up to kind of capture the heat and get it cranked up. Okay, so we are back from the barbecue. So this is cooled off, obviously. He isn't 600 degrees anymore. He stopped screaming. He did. Yeah. <laughs> but as you know, as you can see. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some darker areas where the linseed oil really gets cooked. It's dried out the piece completely, so it's no longer tacky. It has changed the color. It's really darkened it up to a more of a, of a caramel color. Mm -hmm. And something that really looks organic rather than, and it doesn't look like, you know, simply um, linseed oil over rust. So we've really changed the complexion of, of the piece with the, the rust and the linseed process. And so he's ready for his final resting place. Well, William, I want to thank you so much for sharing your secrets. Well, thank you And very we much. will look forward to the upcoming Art in the Garden show at the Bellevue Botanical Garden. Uh, one's that August 28th and 29th. Uh, William will be there as well as Jack and the others. And we hope you can come out and meet him. Thank you so much. Thank you.